going to be so we're here spearfishing with the locals we've got Isaiah with here with us and Lily at the back so thank you for them for taking us out to do this spearfishing we're going to try to catch some fish how are we feeling guys? let's get this by the time we're out of the water we're going to have some, some dinner tonight so yes so what we're going to do is yum blood style we're going to catch our dinner tonight and if we don't catch anything no dinner Alright, so we've got two Paris fish and one leather jacket. Okay. Right, tell us why this place is called Hell Beach. Yeah. So Kahena is a special place. The reason why we're here and the reason that we got everything set up here. Um, so we got on either side these rock channels going out. There's a coral reef when we were out there we noticed it's a little more shallow running that side. Yeah. Um, this beach takes people every year, man. I've, I've saved a few people here since I've lived out here. Uh, I've got friends who've saved multiple people here. It's a wild beach and it comes out of nowhere. Um, the tide changes, the currents change, the swell gets pretty gnarly. Yeah. So, appreciate what we have. Definitely not some uh, some friendly little resort beach with the real deal here. Yeah. yeah. And it goes really deep as soon as you get out. And just getting the waves pushed at you, it kind of like sucks you in as soon as it pushes out. The waves are really strong out here. You got to be careful when you're swimming in these beaches. So what, why these rocks are placed like these? Rock stacking is a huge thing in Hawaii. It's a big thing everywhere, but especially out here, you'll see this anywhere you go. Um, yeah. These smooth dot rocks are from Pohoihoi, which is the smooth lava. Yeah. Um, after so long in the ocean, the water just washes them down, makes them smooth. Um, if you see any of this crumbly stuff over here, the stuff that's hard to walk on, it's called a'a. Uh -uh. um, yeah, it's, it's pretty wild out here, man. This black sand beach isn't going to last forever. Usually black sand beaches have about a 100 year lifespan. Yeah. Oh, really? Really? So these black sand is actually from the volcanic eruptions and then they smoothen out into the white, into the black color. All right, tell us about today's catch. So we went out there, ended up getting these back to back. Red Uhu, the parrot fish. Yeah, apparently the red ones are the female, is that right? Correct. And then we saw some blue ones before, they're the males. Yeah, the blue ones out there, the males, and then here we have, um, it's actually a type of surgeon fish. Yep. Um, same family as those uh, hoggies out there, the black ones with the white stripe. Yeah. Um, so we got two things over here. These are poisonous actually. A spike. There's two spikes, one at the top and then one at the bottom. Yeah, yeah you don't want to get stabbed with these buggers. Yeah. And most also, of the fish have something like this on their yeah. tail fins too. Um, parrots don't, luckily for us. Yeah. Yes, sir. <laughs> so for these ones, you have to take off right before you cook them. You cut them open and then you pull out the skin. Exactly. And the, when you fill up them, it tastes delicious. Oh, yeah. The red uhu here, red yeah. fish. These fish are really cool. They actually eat a lot of coral and are what the cause, the main cause of the white sand beaches are. Um, you usually only get these for a special occasion, hence you guys being here. Um, and so another thing was I was night diving uh, a few weeks ago and I found one of these kind of hidden under a rock, but it had this weird cloud pillow thing covering it and I found out that they actually secrete a mucus that encases their whole body and protects them from the scent getting out from predators. Um, so it's pretty unique and these fish taste amazing. You can definitely eat them fresh, um, but today we're gonna hand fry them and maybe do a little breading and see where we go from there. So now that we got these fillets, the yep. preferred method is definitely going to be on the pan. I like just doing like a little bit of butter and really trying to get as much of that quick sear as possible. I have to walk out of the front door and just on the corner up here, we have a lemon tree that is going off right now. Um, right here, 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 and here. These are all mango trees. Um, there's a mac nut tree right here. And then this guy right here is a soursop tree and the fruits are actually doing really well. Um, I'm trying to figure out which one of these bad boys to pick. You know, I think I'm just going to rip, rip on this one right here. Okay. Yeah, Can we find up there, buddy? 
Oh, okay, 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 hold on. Round two. Yeah, I'll stretch a little bit. Hey, nice. double whammy. Oh, you got two there, yes, bro. Uh, yeah, we got a couple of them. Mm. We're gonna use this in our little shoyu sashimi sauce. Nice. Uh, gonna fill some parrotfish. Give it the sashimi. Yes, First, you put some boiling water over the, the meat. Just make it a little bit more cloudy. It's delicious. It's like really soft. Yeah, like there's like very, two like, textures to yeah, one. Yeah. The outside's different. The outside, different. you can taste a little bit of cooked and... Yeah. yeah. Inside's like chewy, soft. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but like not too chewy. It still just kind of melts in your mouth. Yeah. 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 Five-star like, chef, Isaiah. You want to... Hell yeah. It's <laughs> 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 about to open the Michelin. Yes, sir. Definitely want to try this one. After the tour company, it's a restaurant. You. Yeah. Hawaiians in the past. Their, their diet only consists of poi and fish. So there's heaps of varieties of fish around here in Hawaii. And they're all pretty big. You can like swim 10 meters, 20 meters out from shore and find fish that can be filleted into that. You know, just like when you didn't have a gun in your hands, the fish were coming right up to you. Yeah. Um, same thing, they're, they're aware of your intentions. Yeah. That, that's something I try to practice. It's like, uh, it's, it's, it has to do with like tracking. It's a hunting method. Um, a primitive skills hunting method is called tracking and it's just about your energy you know you have your rings of perception you know when you have somebody that is and, you, and you're all alone all of a sudden somebody gets within your 30 foot ring you can kind of sense it like, oh there's somebody here and you never know what that is um, mm -hmm. but then they get inside your 10 foot ring there's another element of almost preparedness that your body goes through and then when you're this close to somebody you know there's another thing in your body that says oh I'm in the presence of another person you, you start reacting differently to that and the whole point of tracking is to bring in your rings of perception so that you can not seem like a predator. Yeah. It's a, it's a skill that other animals use, a lot of it's body language and eyes movement for mm. fish especially. Yeah. Um, but when you practice that and you get good at it then the fish just come right up to you and then it's not so much you're hunting, you're just kind of mm. doing what you do. I feel like a lot of the animals, I don't know about fish, but it's about eye contact. Guaranteed. Fish. Eye contact will definitely anything in the ocean. affect it. Yeah. Any, anything in the ocean, eye contact is huge because yeah. that's the only body language that the fish, has. That fish have to to go off of. Mm. You know, if something's swimming in the water and all of a sudden, you know, they mm. know, oh, he just looked at me. And that's their main source of like a, a response as far as yeah, body language sure. goes. Yeah, that's pretty cool.